Greetings, my brothers and sisters, wherever you are watching us from, uh, be it in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, in the Caribbean, or in America, wherever you are. May the Lord bless you. Welcome to the Herald Report YouTube Ministry. My name is Kudzai Gogora. We are progressing with uh, uh, the series Signs of the Times, and today we are on part six, and we are dealing with the topic, uh, uh, topic with subtopics. Christian, Christians refuse the jab. Jab an act of love. Jab not effective. Sleeping watchmen. Christians refuse the jab. Jab an act of love. Jab not effective. Sleeping watchmen. Therefore, we are looking at this confused world. What is happening in this confused world regarding vaccine? And the question is, what is the people of God or what are the people of God saying? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, by thy grace and thy power, may your spirit, O Lord, accompany us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, I want to go, this is a King James Version, but let me go to NIV. NIV says on verse 8, And all these are the beginning of birth pains. To ladies, we have gone through labor. You are very familiar. You know that when labor is beginning, you may have pain which comes, uh, uh, the pain which uh, comes, for example, it comes in intervals of 15 minutes, and then it increases to 10 minutes, and then it increases, well, it reduces to 10 minutes, it reduces to 5 minutes until it's continuous pain. And this pain, when it comes, sometimes it just comes, it lasts few seconds, it's gone. And then it comes, it lasts few more seconds, it's gone and comes it last few minutes is gone until it's a continuous pain so jesus is saying these are the beginning of birth pains meaning that as we go through this pestilence these calamities the pain is increasing increasing until it's very intense and when the pain is intense the baby is about to come out and if the baby does not come out at that time the mother may die so when the baby comes out, then the pain will all be gone. That's exactly what will happen with our redemption. We'll go through so much pain, but it is in that intensity of pain, as we learn from the book of Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, that Michael will stand to deliver his children. But let me tell you something in that pain. When you go in the intensity of pain, we learn from the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 21, and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. So as we go through the pains and calamities, in fact, let me read verse 22. It says, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endure to the end shall be saved. We are going to go through a very challenging time of trouble. We are going to go through pain and torture. There will be rejection. We hate one another. Now, let me go faith actually to the book of John chapter 16, verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of synagogue. Yea, that time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think he has done God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father or me. The time will come when they shall put us out of synagogue. In our previous presentation, no job, no church, we have actually brought it very clear that we are going to hate one another. That had not happened at that time, but now the time has started. There are many places that you cannot go to church if you don't have a job. When you go to church, you go by the door, and the elder or the deacon will be waiting to see your vaccination card. And if you don't have that, you are not entering into church. This is happening, my brothers and sisters, and we say COVID-19 is a precursor for the National Sunday Law. I've listened to quite a lot of presentation about COVID so far, and I'm actually getting a sense that there is a great confusion about this vaccination issue. The question is, is it really true that we don't have anyone who has a better understanding to help us what is happening? We're going to deal with that shortly, but let me actually look at what, what's happening in the world today. 
We have already said that the world is preparing for a great crisis and so many things are happening. There is confusion in churches, there is confusion in government, there is great anxiety among people and many people, they don't even understand what to do. The question is, is there somebody prepared to give direction to what is happening? Do we have a watchman who can actually help the children of God in the decision making? We need that help. But now look, I want you to picture this scenario, what's happening in the world today. I picked this from, uh, 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 this is US uh, World Report, US News. Uh, 10th of August 2021, not very long time ago, just uh, about two, nearly just about two weeks ago. The paper was saying white evangelical churches in the crisis of vaccine hesitancy. And then it says about 14% of American adults say they won't get vaccinated under any circumstances as of June. Under any circumstances, they will not be vaccinated. Well, that's as serious, my brothers and sisters. 14% of American adults under any circumstances. Now, these 14%, they are just 14%, but it doesn't mean that the number is 14%. The number is way, way high. There are many others in the world who will never be vaccinated under any cost. But let me go further. The, it says, it's, uh, the, the paper says, they do not see... They do not see the virus as a major threat to themselves, and they see the vaccine as a great threat to themselves. So the virus is not a major threat, but the real threat is the vaccine. For that reason, they don't care whether they see someone dying of it or not. They don't care whether they will die with the virus or not. But as for them, they believe that the real toxic thing is the vaccine. The question is, are they telling the truth? Or are they lying? But now let's look at the reason why they don't want to be vaccinated. It says some evangelicals have found biblical justification for their opposition to vaccination. So they have found biblical justification to their opposition on vaccination. Therefore, come what may, these protestants, these evangelicals, they will not take the vaccine. But now, le let me leave that one for now. Let me actually look at uh, what the Pope said. This is what many of us believe. Many of you probably believe. Let me say many of you believe. I don't believe him. But however, there are some who believe him and the majority, probably billions of the world believe him. It says, this is taken to New York Post. Pope Francis hypers COVID-19 vaccine as an act of love in new PSA. So now he say it's an act of love. Let's listen to his words. Get the vaccines that are authorized by the respective authorities in an act is an act of love. And helping the majority of people to do so is an act of love. He continues, getting vaccinated is a simple yet profound way to come one to care for one another, especially the most vulnerable. So when I'm being vaccinated, when someone is putting a jab on me, he's saying that's an act of love. I'm showing love. When they are putting that thing in my system, that toxic substance in my system, it's an act of love. When they are putting that vaccine, which they don't understand the side effects of that thing, the long-term side effects, it's an act of love. That's what he's saying. Now the question is, how, what kind of definition is this act of love? Let me go further. Because, you know, as he did that, uh, there are quite a lot of Catholics who have listened to him, but there was a difference. Now listen to this one. It says, compare that to Hispanic and white evangelical Protestants whose vaccine acceptance rate have only reached 50% despite months worth of evidence that the shot is safe and successfully saves staffs of severe COVID-19. So the evangelicals, they said no. But uh, the Catholic have been convinced by their, their Papa God. And um, many are listening to him. But now let me come to these words again. Vaccine is an act of love. You express your love to your neighbor by being vaccinated. Now, that was on the 18th. Let me pedal back. Let me look at another paper. This was on the 19th. In fact, no, yeah, on the 19th. Listen, the 19th. This is ITV News. It's an English channel, ITV News. Double jabbed who get COVID. 
is likely to spread virus is an, uh, unvaccinated but less likely to catch it. Now listen to, listen to this. A major study has found that while our COVID-19 vaccine continue to be brilliant at keeping people out of hospital and dying from disease, they won't be able to rely, to rely we, we won't be able to rely on them to bring the pandemic un under control. Why can we not rely on vaccine? Listen, we already knew neither vaccine was perfect at preventing someone getting infected with COVID. But the study inclusively shows that even if you are double jabbed and you are unlucky enough to catch COVID, you might be just as infectious as you would have been if you had never been vaccinated at all. So whether you are vaccinated, double jabbed or not, you are still infectious. You can still catch COVID. You can still die of COVID, whether vaccinated or not. The question is, how then do I look after my neighbor by being vaccinated? When I'm vaccinated, I still spread the disease. You know what Poppy is saying? It's a heresy. It's a heresy. It does not make sense. Let me go further. Let me go further because uh, it says that uh, this is actually uh, this. This was 31st of July, uh, 31st of July. It's way before that. It says uh, COVID double jab to carry some same amount of virus is unvaccinated. Same amount of virus is unvaccinated. It says patients double jabbed against COVID-19 have the same amount of coronavirus, uh, coronavirus load as those who aren't vaccinated, say scientists probing a Delta variant spread in Massachusetts. Uh, so if you are vaccinated and you are not vaccinated, you are both on the same ground in terms of spreading infection. I still ask a question, how then will that be loving my neighbor to be vaccinated? My brother, those are lies. That guy is lying is lying pure now listen let, let's go further 10th of august 2021 listen to this scientist of oxford university it says head immunity a mythical goal that will never be reached says oxford vaccine head i've heard many people preaching about head immunity but the, the but the scientists here and these people are pastors who are preaching they are not scientists but they are saying we are going to reach head immunity but the scientists there they say that's impossible and that's a myth oh my brothers and sisters if it's a myth why are they preaching this myth now let's read the paper. I say head immunity is not a possibility because the Delta variant can spread among vaccinated individuals, according to the experts, including the director of the Oxford Vaccine Group. So even the director of the vaccine group is actually reporting that this this virus can spread even to people that has been vaccinated. And then he went further. But over the last fortnight these warps have unraveled while vaccines have been shown to protect against severe illnesses hospitalization and death mounting data suggests they do not hold transmission so if they do not hold transmission and then i'm being vaccinated as an act of love to my neighbor what exactly does that mean foolishness now let's look at another paper this is uh this was actually last week uh, COVID infections uh, protection warning in double jabbed people, winning in jab, double jabbed people. This is BBC News. Go and check it. It says uh, the real researchers say they are seeing some winning of protection against COVID infections in double jabbed people. In other words, this vaccine is not lasting longer. I was vox vaccinated against polio. I was vaccinated against TB. Those are lifetime vaccines. This is totally and completely different from this kind of vaccine. It says the world, the real world study includes data on positive COVID uh, PCR test results between May and July 2021 among more than a million people who have received two doses of Pfizer or AstraZeneca vaccine. So this is a very big study. It says protection after two shots of Pfizer decreased from 88 at some month, at one month to 74, at five to six months. So 
when you are vaccinated, double vaccinated, it is believed you are 88% protected, you are not 100%. And then that protection decreases with time. And then he says that the Astra, AstraZeneca, in AstraZeneca, this, the fall is from 77% to 67% in just four to six to five months. What exactly does that mean? It means that you need to be continuously be vaccinated. But now listen to Feather. Feather, uh, listen to this one. Professor Specter says, he estimates that protection against infection could drop to 50% by winter and boosters will be needed. This is exactly what is happening here in England. They have bought 32 million 32 million boosters in preparation for winter. Very soon they will be jabbing people uh, because uh, those who have uh, double jabbed, uh, the protection is winning off, so they need to be continuously jabbed and jabbed and jabbed and jabbed and jabbed. What exactly does that mean to the pharmaceutical companies? They make big monies. What exactly does that mean to our health? Oh Lord, have mercy. No, so now here it is. The Pope is saying, to be vaccinated is an act of love. But when I'm vaccinated, I still spread coronavirus. When I'm not vaccinated, I still spread coronavirus. So is it an act of love? No, it's not. It's a lie. By the way, the Pope is talking like a Jesuit. So the Jesuit, they just know what to say and how to say it and when to say in order to achieve their cause. But unfortunately, I've heard pastors preaching of head immunity. And I've heard pastors preaching that, you know, it's an act of love for me to be jabbed. Oh, please, pastors. I don't think you are preaching the real gospel. You have missed your point. You have missed your call. This is not what we're supposed to be talking about. There is a better gospel to preach than to preach lies, which are very clear in papers. The papers are very clear to us that, you know what, this vaccination is not effective. It's not 100% effective. You are still vulnerable. You are still prone. The question is, why then are we forcing people to have it? And why would we stand to refuse people to go to church because they don't have vaccine? When we know for sure, when we know for real that this thing does not work. I've got a real question. Why are we forced to have the vaccine? Why should an intelligent government, being led by intelligent people, compel its members to be vaccinated? Why should be a pastor stand on the pulpit to tell his members to go and be vaccinated? Where do they get that mandate from? Who has employed them? Who is their master? And why are you doing that when actually people have got a liberty of conscience to think you give them information. This one does A, B, C, D and they make decision by themselves. And you are saying to them, don't make a decision. Do what we are saying. If you don't get vaccinated, don't come to church. My brother, the moment you say that, that's your church. And the children of God will stop coming to your church. Just like Jesus Christ who was expelled in from the Jerusalem temple. And he went and he started his church under the tree. The children of God will go where God wants them to go. And they will go and congregate with Jesus in, their place, in that place. And you will remain with your church. That's the reality of it. But now the question is this. When the world is in so much confusion. Can there not be one person who can give di direction to the world? Where are the children of God? The evangelicals have said, we have got it from the Bible that vaccine is not good. And for that reason, the Bible does not compel us to be vaccinated. Yes, I'm going to leave that for today. But I think the evangelicals have a point. Definitely the evangelicals have a point and it's worth it to get. You cannot actually despise them until you have sat down with them. You just need to sit down with them and they'll prove to you what they mean from the Bible. That's what we learn from Acts chapter 17 verse 11. The people of Berians, they went in the study. My job is now to go and study where exactly the evangelicals are taking it from. But the question I have my, myself is this. God is a God of love. 
And God has got messengers here on earth who are carrying the truth. And the question is, where are you, the messengers of God, who have got the truth when the world is in so much confusion? You cannot afford to add on the confusion of the world. You need to be very plain and clear and bring the truth as you have been taught by the word of God. If you really represent God, this is the time to see your truth. If you really, if you really have the truth as you assume to have or as you profess to have, this is now the time to see that truth. We want to hear that truth from you and we want to see that truth being lived in you. Maranatha page 2, two par paragraph 1 says, those who have a knowledge of the truth as it is revealed in God's word must now come to the front. What we need now is the truth. The world is in confusion. The world has misdirection. The world is being misguided. We have got leaders who do not know. We have got leaders who do not understand. We have got leaders who are so ignorant, misguided pastors, misguided deacons, misguided evangelists, misguided prophets. And we want those with the truth to come forward. Says, my brother, Brethren, God requires this of you. Every jot of your influence is now to be used on the right side. You are a medical doctor. Let your influence be used on the right side. You are a pastor. You have a following. Let your influence be used on the right side. All who are now to learn... All are now to learn how to stand in defense of the truth. That is worth accepting. Those who are endeavoring to live the Christ life must call things by the right name and stand in defense for the truth as it is in Jesus. Stand in defense for the truth as it is in Jesus. What does the Bible say? What does the spiritual prophet say? What does God say? Please give us guidance. Give us some understanding. Give us some wisdom. We need the one who is truth. The one who is truth. The truth that is in him prevail. You cannot afford to preach what's on the newspaper. You cannot afford to preach a heresy. You cannot afford to tell us things which you just think in your mind, which has no substance. The world is in need of substance. The world is in desperate need for substance. And where are those with the substance? You know, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17, Son of man, I have set thee a watchman over the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of, at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest not a warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require a dying hand. God will require the blood of the wicked at the hand of us if we are not honest with the world. If we are really serious that God has given us the truth. If we are really serious that we are the representative of God. So let's say the truth. We cannot afford to be silent we need to be very plain and clear to each and every one that people may know what to do. The book Today with God, page 20, paragraph 2, it says, God has a position of duty for each one of you. What is your duty? He requires you to be not only faithful sentinel, but thorough workmen. Never become uninterested, never careless, never inactive, never sleep at your post. Never fail to perform your exact duty in accordance with your position of trust. Your position of trust, my brothers and sisters, is to be honest with people. Your position of trust, my brothers and sisters, is to help people to make an informed decision. Your position of trust, my brothers and sisters, is not to mislead people, is to be honest with them, is not to compel people to be vaccinated. Your position of trust, my brothers and sisters, is to helping people to make their decision based on the true knowledge of the truth as it, as it is revealed. Your position of trust, my brothers and sisters, it's not that you should compel people to do that which is wrong, to misguide and misdirect people. Do that which God has called you. But unfortunately, some of you guys, your position of trust now is to stand on the doors of the church to stop people going to church. That's your position of trust. Your position of trust now is to sure that nobody will come to church without a vaccination. That's your position of trust now. I'm sorry you have not been employed by God, but you have allowed the devil to use you. And indeed, you are now instruments in the hand of the devil. 
Jesus accepted all. And now you are saying to the church of Jesus, you are the one now who is working as a screen to, with, to, 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 to refuse some. I was talking to my colleague and he was saying to me, in fact, let me actually say my colleague, I was talking to somebody saying to me, we've been told that now the church will be open, but only for the vaccinated. And the elder is saying only for the vaccinated, they are the ones who can come to church. Uh, and then so the colleague was telling me, oh, the pastor has already informed us, now we are doing nominating committee. Only those who are vaccinated should be given a position of an elder. Oh yeah, very much. You are the vaccinated one. You can have your eldership. It's okay. Because you are vaccinated. My brothers and sisters, our God is much more than this. Truth is much more than this. He says, there is need for alacrity, promptness, even earnest energy, deep interest and unwavering fidelity. You should learn to spring to the work at the call of duty. How long will it be our allotted time to work? We know not. This is a secret with God and for wise purpose withheld from us. But what time we have to labor, let us employ it as those who must give an account. We're going to give an account to all our actions, to all our influence. The question is, can I afford to be silent? Can I afford to be indifferent? Can I afford to stay aloof? What is the message that is God has given us? You know, God has a challenge with many of us who are watchmen. God has a real challenge with us. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 6, the Bible says, Chapter 21, 6. For thus said the Lord unto uh, to me, Go set a watchman. Go set a watchman. Let him declare what he seeth. Now, the watchman, what do you see? What do you see, the watchman? Be honest. What do you see? And then on verse 21, the Bible makes 20, chapter 21, verse 11. The watchman tells us what he see. The morning cometh. And also the night, if you inquire, inquire and run. But now I want to go to another watchman. The another watchman, which is in some, uh, Isaiah chapter 56, verse 9. It says, All ye beasts of the field, come to devour ye, all ye beasts in the forest, come and devour. And now why should the beast devour? Because, verse 10, his watchmen are blind. The watchman is supposed to see. The watchman is supposed to give a report, but the watchman is blind. They are ignorant. The watchman is supposed to know. The watchman is supposed to understand, but the watchman is ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. The watchman is supposed to blow the horn when the enemy is coming. The watchman is supposed to shout. The watchman is supposed to inform. The watchman is supposed to, con to communicate, but the watchman is a dumb dog. They cannot bark. He is sleeping. He is lying down. He is lying having to slumber. In other words, this is a lazy watchman. But let's go to verse 11. It says, ye, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. All what the watchman wants is to eat. As long as he has a paycheck, he's going to enjoy himself together, probably with his family and his loved ones. That's all what he wants. He is not doing his duty as a watchman. He is not doing his duty to inform of the danger that is coming. And they are all shepherds. And they, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. The watchman does not understand between the, the difference between left and right. The watchman is now taking notes from uh, the papacy. The watchman is now taking notes from the government. The watchman does not have an understanding of what is happening. All oh, what is going on is he is actually talking of what the government have said. If the government report one thing today, the watchman is now reporting what the government reported. If the government says something, the watchman is just saying what the government is saying. What, what a foolish watchman. What an unwise watchman. They look to their own way, everyone for his again, for from his quarter. That's what that watchman is doing. The question is, is that you, my brothers and sisters, a greedy dog, not having enough, just eating, enjoying your salary, that's all. 
listening to the government on everything and then you do what the government say. By the way, my brothers and sisters, I'm not preaching disobedience to the government here. I'm preaching consistent to the word of God above every other way. That's what I'm talking about here. Where, the question is, where are our pastors to give us direction? Where are our evangelists to give us direction? Where are our elders to give us direction? Should we listen to the mandates of the government? above the word of God? Should we listen to the dictates of government above the word of God? Should we listen to something which is contrary to the word of God and then we take that as a directive on how to worship? Are we now being directed on how to worship our God from the government? Are we now being directed on how to care ourselves from the government? Is now our freedom of conscience being taken? Have we surrendered ourselves to the government? Where are the children of God who can help the world today? We cannot just cry, my brothers and sisters. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be honest with God. And we need to listen to the directive from God. There are people who have lived at a time just like this. I think of John Knox. The man who was fearless, the man who was consistent, John Knox was a member of the true church. And Spiritual Prophets, page 172, paragraph 1 says, In Scotland, the gospel found a champion, champion in the person of John Knox. In Scotland, the word found a champion in the person of John Knox. The man was a true-hearted reformer. He feared not the face of a man. Now listen, John Knox did not fear the face of a man. John Knox did not fear the face of a man. The only time when John Knox trembled, it was when he was told to preach the gospel. The Queen of Scotland, it's written that she feared the prayers of John Knox more than she feared the armies of England. John Knox was more than a match to the Queen of Scotland. John Knox was more than a match to the host of the evil one, to the host of the angels of the devil. In John Knox, the gospel found a champion. Now it goes on. The true-hearted reformer feared not the face of a man. The fires of martyrdom blazing about, about him served only to quicken his zeal to greater intensity. With the tyrant exhaled maliciously over his head, he stood his ground, striking steady blows to the right hand and to the left to demolish idolatry. Thus he kept to his purpose, praying and fighting the battles of the Lord until Scotland was free. The man was brought face to face with the Queen of England, Scotland. And it says, in whose presence the zeal of many a leader of Protestant had abetted. That's why many of us today, we are so fearful to the elders of the church. We are so fearful to the pastors of the church. We are so fearful to the governments of the day, to the extent that we compromise on the principles of God, but not with John Knox. He says, John Knox bore unswavering witness for the truth. He was not to be won by caresses. Many of us, we have been won by grants from the government. We receive paychecks from the government. We receive good words from the government. Sometimes we receive nothing, but we just succumb to what the government says, even though when it's contrary to the word of God. He quelled not before threats. The queen charged him with heresy. He had taught the people to receive a re religion prohibited by the state. He declared and had thus transgressed God's command. She declared and had thus transgressed God's command, enjoying subject to obey their princes. John Knox answered firmly. Now, I want you to listen to the answer of John Knox. It says, As right religion received neither its origin nor its authority from princes but from the eternal god alone so are not subjects bound to the frame their to, to frame their religion according to the tests of their princes so according to john knox the government will not tell me how to worship the government will not tell me how to obey god the government will not tell me how to present my petitions to God. 
He continues, For often it is the princess of all others. For often it is that princess of all others are the most ignorant of God's true religion. My brothers and sisters, I want you to follow this precisely. The princess, the kings, the governors, the presidents, the prime ministers, they are the most ignorant of all God, of God's true religion. Some of them, they worship idols. Some of them, they believe in witchcraft. Some of them, they are instruments in the hand of the devil. They are the most ignorant when it comes to the word of God. That's why they are pastors, they are elders, they are deacons to lead the church of God, evangelists to lead the church of God, not to receive Cancel from the government. My brothers and sisters, we need to wake up on this call. We need to wake up. We cannot afford to be led by the pagans. We cannot afford to be led by the idolaters. And they tell us how to worship our God. And John Knox says, If all the seed of Abraham had been of the religion of Pharaoh, whose subject they long were, I pray you, madam, what religion would they have been in the world? If all in the days of the apostles had been of the religion of the Roman Empire, I pray you, madam, what religion would, have, would they have been now upon the earth? And so, madam, you may perceive that subjects are not bound to the religion of their princes, although they are commanded to give them reverence. Oh yeah, we own our presidents. We love them so much, they are our presidents. They have got their place, but when it comes to worship, our presidents, our prime ministers, our governors, they have no say. They have nothing to do with the liberty of our conscience. We worship God the way how he has revealed his truth to us. And on this note we'll stand. On this note, men are going to be martyred. On this note, men are going to be massacred. Standing on it, thus says the Lord. But the question is, when did, where did John Knox got his power from? We learn from Evangelism, page 294, paragraph 3 says, If we have the interest that John Knox had when he pleaded before God for Scotland, we shall have success. He cried, give me Scotland, Lord, or I die. And when, and when we take hold of the work of and wrestle with God, saying, I must have souls, I will never give up the struggle. We shall stand, we shall find that God will look upon our efforts with favor. My brothers and sisters, John Knox was a man of prayer. The Queen of England feared the prayers of John Knox. How often do you pray? And when you pray, what do you pray for? John Knox prayed, give me Scotland or I die. Single-handedly, with the support of the friends, we encourage him to preach. John Knox turned Scotland upside down and Scotland was a Protestant country. Today we are in the world of internet. Today we are in the world of technology. John Knox could not travel all over the world, but I want to believe is John Knox was here. John Knox will pray, give me the world, O oh Lord, or I die. Give me the world. The world is misguided. The world is missing a leader. The world is missing somebody who can bring the truth to the world. Give me the world, O oh Lord, I die, or else I die. Where are the messengers today who pray earnestly? Where are the messengers today? Who can stand for the truth? Where are the messengers today? Who can give direction to this world? Where are the messengers of God today? Who can stand on the platform of truth when everyone is speaking, when everyone has become the mouthpiece of the beast? My brothers and sisters, the governments of the day, they are taking notes from the beast. The governments of the day, they are busy in the plan of implementing the new world order. The governments of the day, they are singing from the script of the beast. They have nothing. We, God is looking for people who can meet the beast, confront the beast head on. We learn from the, uh, my life today, page uh, uh, two, uh, two, uh, three, two, five, paragraph five. The enemy of righteousness left nothing undone in his effort to stop the work committed to the Lord's builders. But God left not himself without witnesses. Workers were raised up who ably defended the faith once delivered to the saints. History bears record 
to the fortitude and heroism of these men. Like the apostles, many of them fell at their post, but the building of the temple went steadily forward. The workmen were slain, but the work advanced. They were dancers. John Wycliffe, John Huss, Jerome, Martin Luther, Zwingla, Glenmar, Latimer, Knox, and Huguenites, John and Charles Wesley, and a host of others brought to the foundation material that will endure throughout eternity. All these people are in the graves now. The question is, who is taking over from them? Who can take over from John Knox? Who can take over from Hugh Latimer? Who can take over from Cranmer? Who can take over from Zwingla? Who can take over from John Wesley? Who can take over from the Huguenots? You can take over the mentor from the world dancers, the people who stood for the faith in the midst of martyrdom. They were not afraid to challenge the government. They were not afraid to challenge the edicts of the government. They were not afraid to stand for the truth. My brothers and sisters, only the fearless will go to heaven. Only those who do not fear will be saved. The time has come for the children of God to be honest and truthful to what they believe in. What do you believe in? Be clear to us what you stand for. Be clear to us, are you worshipping the God of heaven or are you worshipping the government? Be clear to us, are you an all-weather Christian or you are a Christian when things are okay? Be clear to us. The Bible says, my brothers and sisters, from Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Because of COVID, many of us may not be allowed to go to church, but fear not. Many of us are going to lose their jobs, but fear not. Many of us are going to lose their bank accounts, but fear not. Many of us are going to miss a lot of privileges, but fear not. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown. My brothers and sisters, when you go into a crisis like in Daniel chapter 3, our God will be seen. When you go into a crisis like in Daniel chapter 6, our God will be seen. Fear not. There is nothing to worry. Don't follow the pastor. Follow God. Don't follow the governor. Follow God. Be faithful to the principles of God. And when we are faithful to the principles of God, God will stand with us. And the deliverance of God is the deliverance of God. If it's to the glorification of his name, he will allow you to be sick with COVID. If it's to the glorification of his name, you could also die with COVID. If it's to the glorification of his name, he can protect you and you'll not even be sick with COVID. If it's to the glorification of his name, he will do things according to his will and we cannot question him. And our job as a children of God is to be still and know that the God of heaven is a God of heaven. And it's only those who are fear, fearless who will be saved. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 as we close, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers, and the warmongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with brimstone. My brothers and sisters, fear is the same as committing adultery, is the same as murder, is the same as stealing. And the Bible says to us, fear not. God is counting on you as a watchman. Let Jesus live in you. Allow Jesus to take over. Allow Jesus to be in charge. Stand still and you see the salvation of men. Do not fear the devil. He's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But you faithful, remain faithful and consistent and God will see you through. Shall we pray? Loving Father of mercy and compassion, in the world of confusion, you have got a people who have the truth. In the world of confusion, you have got a people who know what Israel ought to do. In the world of confusion, 
you have got your people who are like the sons of Issachar, who have got an understanding of the time. May you strengthen your children to be faithful, to be consistent, to listen to you, and to be a true light in this dark world. Pour your spirit upon your children, O oh Lord, and give us grace to have a good understanding and to rejoice as we live to represent you faithful wherever we are. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord truly bless you and we'll meet you on the next edition. We encourage you to share the message all over the world and we encourage you if you've got any questions, we are ready and prepared to help with one another to deal with the questions as the Spirit of the Lord directs us. Once more, God bless you until we meet again.